In the previous video, we learned about a rule known as the distributive law. And we are now going to see how we can use that law to apply to a situation where we don't have a monomial times a binomial, a single terms times by a multiple term, but rather a binomial multiplied by a binomial. So for example, if we wanted to multiply two very large numbers, 32 and 59, we don't know the 32 times table up to 59, so we need to have another method of, of working out what the value of this is. So if we use the principle we learned in the previous lesson where we split each number into its place values, so 32 would be the sum of 30 and 2, and 59 would be the sum of 50 and 9. Okay, and if we write two brackets and we want to multiply them, we don't need to write the multiplication sign in between them. We can just write them directly next to each other. So if we wanted to use the distributive law in order to work this out, we have to remember that you've got to multiply everything in the first bracket by everything in the second bracket. Otherwise, you are not going to work out the complete product of those two numbers. So. If you want to multiply everything by, by each other, you're going to need to multiply the 30 by the 50 and the 2 by the 50. Then you've multiplied both of these numbers by 50. In order to complete this, you're also going to need to multiply both numbers by the 9. So if we work that through, 30 times 50, we just worry about the 3 times the 5, which is 15. There were two zeros in the numbers we were multiplying, so our product needs to have two zeros. 30 times 9, 3 times 9 is 27, and 30 had a zero, one zero on it, so our product will be 270. Then we come to do the 2, we've now multiplied the 30 by both numbers, now we need to do the 2. 2 times 50 is 100, and 2 times 9 is 18. If you now add all of these together. 100 plus 18 is 118. So we're going to have 1500 plus 270 plus 118. So that's 8, so that's also 8. 2, 3 plus 5 is 8. So the final answer is 1888. So if you'd like, you can pause the video here and write down the rule that I've written down here. When you multiply two binomials, make sure that both the terms in the first bracket are multiplied by both the terms in the second bracket. And in order to help us remember this, you might have learned this word FOIL. And FOIL just is a little acronym that helps you to remember to multiply everything by everything else. The F stands for the firsts. So in our case here, that was the 30 multiplied by the 50. It was the first term in each bracket. The O stands for the outers. That is the outside term in each bracket. So in our example, that referred to the 30 and the 9. The I stands for the inners, which are the two terms on the insides that are closest to each other. So in our bracket, that was the 2 times 50. And the lasts are the last terms in each bracket. And in our case, it was the 2 and the 9. So if you remember the little word FOIL, it just helps you to not leave any of your multiplication out. Let's have a look at some algebraic examples. So if we have x plus 3 multiplied by 2x plus 4. So if we remember to do FOIL, the F stands for the two first terms in each bracket. So the two first terms would be the x and the 2x. So x times 2x is 2x squared. The outers, the outers would be the two that are furthest away from each other. So it would be the x and the 4. So x times 4, and remember that it was x times positive 4, so the product is positive 4x. If we now do the inners, the inners are the two terms that are closest together. Positive 3 times positive 2x is positive 6x, and the outers are the two, sorry, rather the lasts are the two last terms in each bracket. Positive 3 times positive 4 is positive 12. Now, in this particular binomial, the two middle terms happen to become like terms. So we need to add two like terms, 4x plus 6x. We now need to take our multiplication hat off and put our addition hat on. Positive 4 add 6 is positive 10. And 
positive 12 doesn't have any like terms. So the final answer is 2x squared plus 10x plus 12. If we have a look at number 2, so again we need to remember to do FOIL. So the first, a times 3a, gives us 3a squared, because this is a to the power of 1 and a to the power of 1, and when you multiply powers with the same base, you add the exponents. Okay, so there's the firsts, the outers, would be the a and the positive 8, so that would give us positive 8a. The inners would be the negative 1 and the 3a, which gives us negative 3a, and the last would be negative 1 times positive 8, and negative times a positive is negative 8. Once we have done all of the multiplication, we check. Again, we have like terms in the middle here. So positive 8a subtract 3a, 8 subtract 3 is 5, and our final answer is 3a squared plus 5a minus 8. In your homework book, there are two examples for you to try, so pause the video here and try those sums on your own. Number one, the firsts are 2y times 3y, so 2 times 3 is 6, and y times y is y squared. The outers are 2y and positive 4, 2y multiplied by positive 4 is positive 8y. The inners, positive 3 times 3y is positive 9y, and the last is positive 3 times positive 4, which is positive 12. We have like terms, positive 8y and positive 9y, so 6y squared, 8 plus 9 is 17y plus 12. Right, and then in number 2. Again, we use FOIL to help us make sure that we multiply everything in the first bracket by everything in the second bracket. The first, b times 3b is 3b squared. The outers, b times negative 4c, a positive times a negative is a negative, and b times 4c is 4bc. Remember, when you have more than one variable in a term, it's advisable to write them in alphabetical order. Positive c times 3b is positive 3bc, and positive c times negative 4c is negative 4c squared. We have like terms in the middle, bc and bc, so negative 4 add 3 is negative 1, so it will be negative bc minus 4c squared.